if you've ever dealt with or are dealing with an emotionally broken man, then you know firsthand how draining this can be. You know how difficult it can be. You know how much work it requires of you if you're trying to move things along with this individual. And at the end of the day, for most women, it ends up being all in vain. It doesn't work out. You end up with more hurt and disappointment. And that's why it's so important as a woman that you learn how to recognize when you're dealing with this kind of man. Now, I know people say that we're all hurt, we're all damaged, whatever words you want to use, because some people don't like the word damaged or broken. But work with me here because you understand what I'm trying to convey. Someone who is holding on to past trauma, someone who has not healed, has not resolved their deeper issues. And though people like to believe that we all have issues, the fact remains that not everyone is still holding on to those issues. Many people have set themselves free. Many people have done the work and found peace. So we can't allow that to be an excuse or a scapegoat because when you do that, you now start making excuses for this man when he does show you the signs. You start convincing yourself that it's okay, maybe because you have some things you haven't resolved. But understand that all of it is unhealthy. All of it needs to be addressed. But again, let's start with recognizing when you're dealing with this. So the first thing, and this you may not have heard this anywhere else, but the first thing I need you to pay attention to is when he praises toxic behavior and toxic characters. All right. So let's start with toxic behavior. You know what? Let's talk about it all. Because if I'm going I'm to be completely transparent with you, when I, when I came up with this first one, I was thinking about a lot of the bad advice that many men are getting online, all right? And now let me make it clear, I'm not throwing shade at nobody, so do not, so don't please assume that I'm talking about anyone in specific. Don't do that. I don't do that here. I don't, I don't attack people in any kind of way. But the reality is that there's a lot of toxic, unhealthy advice floating around. And a lot of it has spoken to the hurt of many men, which is why you'll find some men who are not only celebrating and, and, and applauding and spreading this toxic information, they're damn near worshiping the people who push the information, worshiping the figures behind the information, all right? And the reality is that this is a huge red flag, a huge sign of emotional distress within that man. Because let me make it clear to you. And let me let me first differentiate a couple things. We're not talking about a joke here and there, <laughs> all right? I, I know some healthy men that may have seen some of this advice and make a joke. A joke is not what I'm talking about, all right? And, and even a level of agreeance with some of the information is not what I'm talking about. Because I do think that, listen, e even people who give bad or toxic or unhealthy information sometimes say very accurate things. So, you know, some people are able to take what they can from it and throw away the rest. That doesn't mean the man is, has, uh, emo is emotionally damaged or broken. It's when it goes beyond that. To one, the defense of this, this information or these figures, no matter what's being said, an inability to hold them to any standard of a, a, a healthy, uh, healthy, positive information being put out there, okay? And again, like I said, worshiping, celebrating it, holding it in such high regard. This is when it's a problem. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, the reality is this. A lot of, and again, toxic behaviors as well is included in this because sometimes you may have a situation, maybe it's a, a video you see online. Maybe you're watching it with the guy that you're dating and it's something very toxic and he's looking at it as it's something great or he's, he's actually celebrating what's happening rather than calling it out for what it is or at least being able to see, yo, that, that's, that's not healthy. You know what I'm saying? At least being able to acknowledge that. And so the point that I really, I really want to drive home is that when you see men gravitate so deeply to this stuff, it is because nine times, 99 times out of 100, if not 100 out of 100, 
I always want to leave exceptions because there are always exceptions to the rule. But 99% of the time, it's because that man has been hurt and has not healed. And that information, that toxic information speaks directly to the hurt, validates the bitterness. And I feel the need to say this, it's hitting my spirit. The same thing happens to some of y'all. Some of y'all are getting advice or, or celebrating very unhealthy, toxic behaviors as a woman. And the truth is you do it because you have not resolved the hurt within you. And when we are dwelling in negativity, we are drawn to the negativity. We find comfort in the dysfunction. We find comfort in the toxic behaviors. It, it helps us make, make ourselves feel better about ourselves for those who are dwelling with it, because I'm good. <laughs> I'm healed, but no, listen. The point is, and I want all y'all to get to that place, but yes, you, you gotta pay attention to what men are feeding their spirit, what men are celebrating in horn high regard, what principles are they now holding themselves to? Because that will speak a lot to where they are and, and what they've been through and what has not been resolved in them. And it's something that has to be addressed. All right, so let's move on to the second uh, sign you're dealing with an emotionally broken man. And that's when he, it, it's always everyone else is wrong. All right. So, and essentially he doesn't take accountability. So you come across these individuals. And again, this is about the men, but I feel the need to say, if you find yourself on this list, humble yourself enough to be able to accept it for what it is and realize that you have some things to address. Just want to put that out there, but let's get back to focusing on the men. So the man who's, it's always everyone else who's wrong. This is important that when you're getting to know a guy, you pay close attention and you'd have discussions about things that happens and happen in his life so that you can then see how did he process it, learn from it, grow from it. Or does he make that story about this person, that person? He is always the victim in the story. And it's never about what he did wrong. This is a problem. Again, there is no healthy person, no person who has taken time to heal and isn't able to self-reflect, isn't able to hold themselves accountable, isn't able to embrace where they have fallen short. And they also understand that falling short doesn't mean you stay there, you get back up and you get better. So when someone shows the habit, the, com the consistent pattern of always blaming other individuals, clearly he has emotional issues. Now, here is why this is, I'm sure most of you know, but sometimes maybe not everyone's aware. A big reason why you cannot overlook this is because you got to understand that if he's doing this with other people, he's going to do it with you. If you guys move forward in a relationship and he makes any mistakes or you attempt to hold him accountable, all this man will do is deflect because he does not know to even how to take criticism in any kind of way. He does not know how to look at himself in the mirror. He has not evolved in that way as a man, as a human being. So to be in a relationship with someone who never takes accountability. One, there's no way you will find happiness and peace in that relationship. There is no way you guys will be able to grow into something better. There is no way that you will be able to handle the, 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 the pitfalls or the, 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 the obstacles thrown your way that any relationship goes through. So you cannot make excuses for that or think, Oh, well, he did that with other people. He won't do it with me. He said he loved me, <laughs> so I'm good. No, no, because someone who is able to take accountability shows that consistently in their life. And the same thing in reverse. Someone who doesn't shows it consistently in their life. You cannot think it's just going to stay over there and not come over here. It's not going to happen like that. So pay very close attention because again, it's another thing that needs to be addressed. All right. So let's keep this going to number three. And before I mention number three, notice I keep ending 
each point, and I'm going to continue to do that, by saying it needs to be addressed. Because again, I remind you, I am not ever going to encourage you to simply run when you see these things. You must address it. And I'm going to explain it with more clarity why addressing first is important because I see so many people that say, oh, hell no. Once the red flag is there, I'm out. What's the point? We don't got time for that, so on and so forth. I will explain at the end, but let's continue. So the third thing on this list is that he consistently dwells in his past. All right. So the reality is this. We all will go through something. We, we all will go through disappointments and hurts. And as I mentioned earlier, it's about learning how to process the moments of disappointment, learning how to learn from it and then grow from it and then move forward. When we are not able to move forward and we keep holding on to what happened, one, we're not letting the new things that God wants to bless us with come into our lives. But more importantly, not more importantly, but just as importantly is that we now become paralyzed in life. And that individual dwelling in their past is unable to progress in life the way that they need to. But in a relationship, it will make it worse because they're paral- them being paralyzed will paralyze you as well. All right, Them being a- unable to move past whatever happened to them is going to affect you as well. Now, one of the things I want to mention that's hitting my spirit again, as far as living in the past, is not being over an ex. So the unfortunate reality is that a lot of people are getting into relationships, never truly healing from their past relationship. And whether they want to admit, admit it or not, and some are not admitting it to themselves, they're living in denial of it, they still have a lot lingering with the ex. Now, things lingering with the ex doesn't mean they want to be with them, so to speak. In some cases, it is. But it just means that they have not truly freed themselves from that situation. And now that does not allow them to embrace the current relationship. And honestly, it doesn't even allow them to choose the the right relationship. I always say people who haven't healed are 99% likely to choose the wrong relationship for various reasons. But getting back to this man still dwelling on his ex, I feel the need to say this. If this comes about, if you start to notice that there's a woman, and man, a lot of it's hitting my spirit right now, so I got to say this too. Sometimes that ex is is still his friend. All right? Some of y'all are dealing with that. Some of y'all will deal with it. Some of you have seen it in other people's lives where the ex is still his friend. And he has not fully released this woman. Now, I'm not attacking all friendships of exes, not saying that none of them can't be fully platonic, but I'm going to keep it real with you. In, in, in most cases, there's, there's some unresolved stuff there. And so when, he is, when you start to see this, whether that woman is present in his life in some capacity or not, I feel the need to tell you that Do not fall into getting into a competition with this woman. I think a lot of times issues like this are overlooked because the woman falls into the trap, the new woman falls into the trap of now, as I said, competing with this other woman. I'm not going to lose this man to her. I'm not going to let her let her think she's better than me, especially if that woman gave you a bad look, said something wrong to you. If she did anything to make you feel like she, she's not respecting you, it, it can be very easy for many to fall into the trap of battling her and now losing sight of the fact that this man has not handled his business. And if he really loves you, If he's really into you, if he's really serious about you, he should not put you in a position that you have to even consider battling some other one. He should be handling that, nipping it in the bud, and that's it. It's done and it's over. So I just I just had to mention that because it happens more than y'all think, all right? And I don't want that happening to you. But the overall point here is whether it be past relationship, whether it be 
disappointment from a job he missed out on or something he felt betrayed and cheated at. Maybe he's still holding on to friends that stabbed him in the back. Whatever the case may be, this is a problem. Because again, the other mistake that many make is thinking that this emotional damage, and let's just use friendship. Let's say it's an old friend that did damage to him. Thinking that, that the, 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 the wound from that situation would not leak blood onto you. It will. In different little ways, it will. Are there some situations where people have managed to not allow it to really negatively impact their partner? I want to say yes, but honestly, no. And the reason why I'm going to say no is this. Even if they don't, it hasn't directly in a, or more blatantly impacted their new partner, the negativity that resides from it seeps into the relationship one way or another, all right? So you're going to pay a price. So again, this is why we cannot just overlook these things and think everything will be okay because that had nothing to do with me specifically. And they seem to be functioning right now. It's like someone being a functioning alcoholic. They're still an alcoholic. They still have an issue. And that issue can still rear its ugly head and cause a huge problem. So don't make excuses for it and make sure you address it. All right. So now number four on the list of signs you're dealing with an emotionally damaged man or emotionally broken man is intense mood swings. All right. So one, let me say this. I think we all go through a level of some kind of swing. Most of us. All right. Maybe there are people who stay really consistent all the way through. But for most people, sometimes you're happy. Sometimes you're sad. You know, you have a bad day. That's normal. This is why I specifically use the word intense mood swings. One minute, they're all the way up here. Next minute, they're all the way down here. All right. And many times it's without even an obvious trigger. It's just out of nowhere. They're just boom, swinging. And this kind of emotional roller coaster can lead to a lot of bigger problems. All right. One, when someone can swing so intensely back and forth, there's, that shows a level of emotional instability. All right. That instability can get even more toxic. It can turn to abuse because now when you are so unstable, it's easier to, to let things come out of your mouth that you shouldn't be saying. It's easier to take certain actions that you should not be taking. It's easier to come completely out of character because they don't have a good control of self and their emotions. And their emotions are running them. And that is not healthy for any individual. So when you start to notice this person has these types of swings, again, we, we've got to dive deeper. Now, I feel the need to talk about depression. And let me say this. I, I mentioned in a different video that, listen, somebody can be depressed. And we're talking about men for right now, but it can apply to anyone. Someone can be depressed. And to me... The issue isn't that they're depressed. The issue is, are they willing to do something about it? Are they willing to work with you? Because if, if not, you should not be obligated to have to now be prisoner to the situation. Now, there are people who take offense to that. And I mean no offense. I'm not here to hurt people's feelings. But what I want those who may take issue with that to understand is, when your response to that is saying, well, you know, some people can't control it. You know, people struggle. It's worse than we realize. Then my response is, okay, then what's the cutoff? To what extent do we allow this to drag on? Because if we're just so focused on you having sympathy for this individual, now there comes a point where people will sacrifice their own peace and sanity for giving them sympathy. And without there being any kind of line drawn, it can drive them to, to all kinds of deaths of misery. It can completely drain and damage them, as well as destroy and deteriorate the quality of the relationship. So what purpose does it serve if there isn't at least an understood line. Now, to me, because there must be a line, the easiest line to draw is, 
as long as you're willing to make an effort. We're not saying the person has to go from fixing their depression tomorrow to being perfect the next day or whatever. We're saying you're working towards better. You're putting forth the effort, whether it's going to a coach or a therapist, whether it's getting medication. I'm just quick disclaimer. Me personally, I don't believe in medication for this, but I am not a doctor. I'm just giving you my personal view, but I would suggest speaking to uh, mental health professionals in this area as far as that. And that's a personal decision to make. I just want to make that clear. But at least you're doing something. Whether I believe in that or not, at least it still shows you're making an effort to make this better. All right. So there's a difference between having sympathy for someone who is, let's just say they're on medication, taking their medication, but they still have their days where they struggle. Okay. That's cool. But if that's, if this person's saying, I, I'm not going to get some help, I don't need any help. I'm fine. Or I just don't want to do it. Whatever the excuse is. No, no, because you're giving, you want to give so much sympathy to them, but where's the sympathy to the person that has to deal with it? They, they matter too. So Getting back to the mood swings, again, be, 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 pay very close attention to that. Um, and, and it's a matter of, as I sound like a broken record, addressing it. Plain and simple, it needs to be addressed. It needs to be worked on. It cannot be overlooked. All right, so before we move on to the next one, here is your chance to get your personal question answered for free on my next live coaching call with my membership program. All you have to do is go to askstephanspeaks.com, click the link in the description or in the comment section, submit your question, and you will have an opportunity to get that question answered for free on my live call. Again, that's askstephanspeaks.com. All right, so now we are on to number five on the list, and the fifth sign of an emotionally damaged man, emotionally broken man, I keep <laughs> using the different words, anyways, is low self-esteem and lack of confidence. Now, I want to start by saying this. I don't think any issue, any of these issues should be overlooked. But do I believe that or do I, will I agree that there are different levels of severity with each one? Yes. And so, I think that a lot of times there are plenty of people who lack confidence or lack a level of self-esteem, at least if not overall and maybe in certain areas of their life. Now, again, I am not, I'm saying that to acknowledge it's a very common issue. I'm saying that to acknowledge that this is something that maybe can, we can have a little bit more patience with, but patience is still not in just accepting it for what it is. Patience is just saying, okay, let's discuss it. We're working on it. Let's work towards making things better. Because again, you can't overlook it because lack of self-esteem and lack of confidence can wreak havoc on a relationship. A lot of times the mistake people make is thinking, and I've kind of said this earlier, that this issue will stay here. So let's just say, this man lacks confidence in um, protecting you. I don't know why that came to me, but let's just go with that. He lacks a confidence in being able to protect you, and it's something that he's internalizing deeply, all right? Well, this lack of confidence, if gone unaddressed, can lead to a level of him being timid in the relationship, can lead, or, or it can have the opposite effect, him trying to overcompensate for it, all right? Leading him to behave in toxic ways, trying to pr- prove that he's tough, trying to, you know, uh, uh, stand in his manhood, so to speak. I don't know if that was the right w- words to use, but either way, you get what I'm saying. He's trying to assert himself, but he's doing it in very unhealthy ways because he is insecure. Or going back to the original Uh, angle, his insecurity lingers. And now that insecurity pours over into other areas of the relationship. And let's be real with each other. As a woman, if this man continues down a path of insecurity, he will become less attractive to you. In him being less attractive, you will desire him less intimately. In you desiring him less intimately, This will create friction in the relationship. Do you see where I'm going with this? 
it's always these, these issues that start here and then domino effect and turn into all kinds of other problems. And before you know it, you have two people in this relationship or in this marriage arguing about, let's just say they're arguing about lack of sex now. But the reality is that the lack of sex started from the lack of confidence that created uh, all kinds of insecurity, which, which created a lack of attraction. Do you see? And if we only attack the sex part, we don't fix the root issues. So nothing's really solved. So now what you'll have is, and I'm speaking from experience, when I say experience, experience as a coach. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> but as a coach where you get these two people to agree to start engaging more sexually, but they can't keep it up. They can't keep it up because the root issue isn't corrected. So things like lack of confidence and self-esteem, I feel like some of you come across a man like this, I said some of you, and you think, well, I, I can inspire him to be more confident. And, and listen, there is a level of truth that you can pour confidence or you can help a man feel better about himself, but you can't overlook the work that he needs to do on his own. Because now, if, if, if it becomes a matter or a mechanism of what you pour into him, then the day that you're not pouring it into him, now what? When, when, you, when you're having a rough week and maybe you're not the greatest cheerleader for that week, is he now going to fall into back into his insecurities and lack of confidence? Yes, he will. I'm going to answer that question for you. Yes, he absolutely will. Because if you become the source of it, then now the burden is on you. And that's not fair. You should become a complement to it. His source must come from within. His source must come from God. But you are the complement that enhances it. All right. So be careful of, again, falling into that kind of a trap and make sure you address it. And now we're at the sixth sign you're dealing with an emotionally broken man. And that is he has an addiction. So let me let me first say that I am not an addiction specialist. And so I do think that if you come across this issue or are dealing with this issue, I want you to, you know, seek professional help in this area. Um, I'm going to give some of my perspective, some of my understanding, but I have not gone in depth enough to say, I know this so well that you can just rely on what I'm saying here. And even if I did, I would still tell you to, you know, glean from other people, but of more importantly, talk to God as well. But anyways, let's get to it. So he has an addiction. This is going to, this is going to hurt some people's feelings, but, <laughs> and some people that I know personally, there's a lot of things that we turn to for vices. And I think some things we've normalized in today's society. But we have to understand that if we are addicted to something, it is a problem. There is porn addiction. There is alcohol addiction. There is drug addiction. All right. But it doesn't stop there. Anything that can take control over someone's life. Gambling is an addiction and it is unhealthy, all right? For some people, smoking is an addiction, all right? And no, not just the cigarettes. I'm talking to the weed heads right now, <laughs> okay? And that's why I say it's gonna hurt some people's feelings because some people like to get their smoke on. And listen, I ain't judging nobody. I'm only, I'm not speaking to the act, I'm speaking to the addiction of it where some individuals are using it to escape life. And that's what most addictions boil down to, in my opinion, is this escape from reality. This thing that allows us to detach and live in this other world where we don't have to deal with the things we deal with. But the problem is we're running and we're not solving, all right? And there's nothing wrong with engaging in certain things to help you relax and stuff like that. But again, are you so reliant on it that you will now let other aspects of your life take, take, take a level, uh, uh, take a hit, take, take, uh, be in any way damaged or negatively impacted for the sake of holding on to your addiction? You've got to be on what well, I'm saying. You got to be honest with yourself as if I'm talking to you, the, the person who is addicted. But um, for the woman who is now seeing this in this man, 
This is what you want to pay attention to. How much control does this thing have over this man's life? How, what kind of an impact is it having on this man's life? But understand that, yes, it speaks to a deeper issue because one of the big mistakes that people make when they are dealing with someone who has an addiction is attacking the addiction on the surface. All right. So the, so using alcohol, just thinking to saying, oh, you should stop drinking or we need to, you know, drinking is destroying you. All your focus is on, on is the drinking. This person has heard stop drinking a million times. That isn't going to resonate with them. And that isn't the real issue. They drink for a reason. We have to understand what's the reason. Now, when I say we have to understand, I mean that in a general sense. Because at the end of the day, if you are dealing with a man who has an alcohol addiction and you attempt to discuss it with him, there's no guarantee he's going to tell you. There's no guarantee he's going to open up to you. And it's not then your job to have to keep fighting to pull it out of him. If he is unwilling to address it, open up, or get professional help, you've got to let him go. There's nothing you can do. I've seen too many people hold on for dear life thinking that they can somehow help this person change and it didn't work. Now, granted, you'll hear stories of people saying, you know, this person not giving up on them is what got them there. But those are really exceptions to the rule. And you have to be very careful with using that as your blueprint because, again, for every one success story, there's hundreds more that failed miserably and paid a bigger price for it, all right? And there's some of you watching this right now, you went through this, you know what I'm talking about. So you cannot put that on yourself. This part, you can't help someone who does not want to be helped. They have to want to be helped and they have to be able to recognize it as an addiction. Now, granted, again, I do think that there are some situations where your perception of addiction, their perception of addiction is gonna be different it isn't to say which one's right or wrong. It's just to say that in that difference, you guys aren't able to come together and find resolution. To me, that still means we can't move forward in a relationship because you two are not on the same page. And if, and if he accepts your definition of addiction, but he does not connect with it in, in a way that says this is a real problem, well, guess what? He's gonna, get back, he's gonna get back to doing that same thing. And if you accept his definition, even though you still feel like it's a huge problem, well, you're gonna be unhappy and miserable. So simply uh, thinking that, well, since we don't see it the same way, we just gonna have to sweep this under the rug and keep it moving. No, it's, it's just another sign that this won't work. But bottom line is addictions are due to deeper unresolved issues in the vast majority of cases. Of course, there's other outliers, but in most cases, people are running from something. And we have to learn, and, I, and this I'm saying to all of us, for any of you who may find yourself in an addiction, one, I want to encourage you to get help, but I also want to encourage you to find alternative healthy paths to dealing with the things you feel like you're struggling dealing with. Because a lot of times we hold on to this one thing because we don't think there's anything else that can help us, but there are other things that we can do. But again, address the deeper issues. All right, and now the last sign that you're dealing with an emotionally broken man, and let me just say, I really want to talk about this one, <laughs> and that is he is unaffected by your emotions. So no one can ever convince me that someone who loves you, a man who loves this woman, is not in any way moved by how she's feeling emotionally, is not in any way moved by your tears or by your happiness. Now, let me throw in a caveat. Do I think, have I seen married couples after years who have unresolved issues and one or the other becomes numb to the other person's emotions? I've seen that plenty of times. And I do think it's possible. I don't think that's automatically a sign that they, they don't love or never love their partner. I do think that sometimes when too much goes unresolved and over a certain amount of time, whatever that time is for each individual, yes, people can become very numb to what's going on. All right. And I, I think they're still moved in some capacity, but again, they're just, they're very detached at that point. It doesn't mean all is lost, but it can happen. 
But when you're starting off dating in a relationship and this guy's already like that or he's always been like this, no. And this definitely speaks to a level of brokenness in this man. Not even a level, just flat out brokenness. Again, to be able, because whether it's he truly does not care or he refuses to show it, that's a problem. All right. So if he just not, if he just does not care, then that's clearly he's just not the man for you. And he's just not serious about you. And there's nothing we can do here. If it's a matter of someone who does not know or is not comfortable showing emotion, let me say this. If that is the case, this will be consistent in other areas of his life and with other people. So he's not going to be unaffected by you, but he's so moved by other people. If that happens, not nah, that it, it, again, not, not good. It's not going to work. But yes, are there some men out there who with everyone, they're very stoic, they're very just keep it all in. This is unhealthy. This cannot be allowed to continue. It's not, it's not only unhealthy for the relationship, it's unhealthy for you and it's unhealthy for him. No one wins in this scenario. All right. But again, he, he, a human being who is healthy does not behave in that way. Plain and simple. They have had to have gone through trauma to be able to put a wall up so high that they're not moved by something or unwilling to show anything when something happens. All right. And that's very deep rooted. So again, he's got to be willing to go get help. So let me say this to wrap this thing up. As I said in the beginning, I told you, you know, a lot of people have this mentality now of you see this red flag and certain things that's on this list, it's a hell no. Like some of you might think, well, addiction or what I identify as an addiction, that's an automatic red flag. There's no need for discussion. The reason why I will never encourage or co-sign you on that is because, let me say this, though I agree that there are certain... I think, for example, if, if, if he killed someone, God, oh, knock on wood, God forbid, or killed someone in your family, yeah, I don't think there's anything we can talk about, right? Molesting, raping, nothing we can talk about. I think those are the violations that, yeah, there's nothing to talk about. A lot of this other stuff, there are potential just misunderstandings. And I've seen so many scenarios where People assume something was a clear cut red flag. And when they, and then because I was able to get them to talk to each other, we're able to find resolution and realize it was just a misunderstanding. The unfortunate reality is that so many people are running around projecting negativity onto situations, taking bad advice, uh, um, having walls up. And of course, I, I, I encourage everyone to heal so that nobody has to deal with trying to work through these things. But even with two healthy, healed people, there's the possibility for lines to get crossed. There's a possibility for misunderstandings to happen because now we have to talk about just being raised differently. And what one man may have been raised to do in a relationship, another man may have been raised differently. It, neither are a reflection of whether he loves you or is serious about you. It's just what he knows or what was taught to do. And then once the woman that he loves expresses concern, expresses that this doesn't work, then if he loves you, he'll correct it. And that's why to me, there is no harm in having a discussion first, because if he is truly just a walking red flag that needs to be let go of, he will show it again and again, or he will show it in that discussion. And it will be made clear that this isn't going to go anywhere. This can't work. Or on the flip side, he will make adjustments and you guys will be able to then move forward into a better relationship. And being able to have worked through it will set you up better for future issues that may come. Thank you for watching this video. Now check this one out over here about how to avoid dating toxic and damaged men. That's why I say the same walls you have to protect you are the same walls blocking your blessings. So you have to be mindful of the goal is not to operate in fear, all right? 
but is to operate, operate more in faith.